Hey guys, I decided to do a part two on this video of what happens to us uh, life after death because there were so many questions and so many um, topics that came up and so I wanted to address those. So part of the questions rotated around the soul recycling. Squawk, squawk. <laughs> rotated around the soul recycling that I brought up, the, um, the supposedly on the moon. Now, I'm not going to digress in too many conspiracy theories or um, matrix theories or so on and so forth. You guys all know like the stories and the theories, and if not, it's easily researchable. So I'll just summarize and um, dive into more of the energetic meanings or what does that mean for us? Like, uh, what do we do with this information, right? So, and I think that's the most um, important thing is, is what do we do with this? Now, I believe that we live in a universe where everything exists, okay? Every possibility of existence possible and that our consciousness is a fluid state of being that flows along these matrix points according to our whatever it is that we attract, whatever it is that we are in alignment with. So if you want to see the entire matrix as a some kind of multi-dimensional grid point, our consciousness flows along that grid and condenses itself into experience at, at certain points where, where there are things to work through or a vibrational change needs to occur or there is a lack of love. Now, the love in this universe is intelligent. It is a consciousness form and it uh, is expanding into all areas of non-love. So this life that we're having on earth is an experience of non-love in some shape or form, some way, shape or form. Either we're not loving ourselves for the vast majority of us. We don't love ourselves. We don't love um, existence. We, we don't love, right? So we can't love each other. And so love is expanding through this, this form, through this experience, through this, this way of being, through us. And so as our consciousness flows along, we have these experiences, we bring love into it, we learn to love ourselves and the other, and once we've done that, we're released from it and move on to the next. So that's basically in a nutshell, before everybody starts dying, you know, going crazy in the comments, in a nutshell, I repeat one more time for those at the back, in a nutshell, that is what I believe, right? So, um when we're we're in this non-physical state when we're purest form uh, we are pure vibrational beings and that's where a lot of the the uh, misunderstandings arise because we try to bring up um, level consciousness we try to bring up um, physical understanding and awareness into the realms where it's no longer applicable or it's 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 a little bit different but to make it understandable on this realm is more difficult because we have to use the words right so the containers to transport ideas in in this world and sometimes the containers are inadequate one of those are the words that we use interchangeably such as soul spirit consciousness itself love love is a great big container for a lot of things we dump a lot of things into that container word love and some of it belongs in there and some of it doesn't. That's the way I see it, but it is what it is. But um, let me just clear up what I believe a soul to be because I had that discussion with um, one of the commenters, which I was really happy that they brought it up because through that I was able to express that and I was able to um, clarify some things, right? So I'm really happy about the comments. Anyhow, um, what is a soul? What is a spirit? What is a body? What are the all these, these various concepts and forms that everybody tries to label the different layers that we are at, um, that we are in order to understand how it all works interchangeably, how all the moving parts work but see this is coming from a very mechanical consciousness not a holistic consciousness it's coming from a background of a mechanical consciousness that I can separate things right that I can separate that I can be divisive that I can label something as something else right so 
But a holistic consciousness doesn't see that. It doesn't see separation. It doesn't see any division. It doesn't, it sees all things working together as a whole, right? So for example, if I look behind me, yes, I could label that a tree, that a bird. This is another tree, right? This is me. But if I'm coming from a holistic consciousness, I'm seeing this whole thing as a life. That's life. Right? <laughs> this whole thing is just life expressing itself. So that's what we try to do with us and what what is within us. And of course, there's it has its positives, but I also feel its negatives because we tend to be inflexible with these labels. We tend to attach ourselves. And that's the problem with our consciousness is that it attaches easily. Right? The one thing that we do not like is change, we do not like chaos, and chaos is labeled as evil and undesirable. And we see that only desirable states are our organization and um, order. And yet both are needed in the universe because sometimes some orders need to be overthrown in which time chaos is a good thing, right? Chaos is a good thing to overthrow that. So we are constantly ourselves moving through these states of organization and chaos, organization and chaos. And we call this, you know, the changing within ourselves, right? So what is a soul? Let's start there because um, I have a different understanding of soul based on the work that I do, based on the experiences that I've had, based on the experiences of other people that I've been um, uh, honored to share and based on my research and it feels like we have a a kind of a a soul is a smorgasbord word right so this this gumbo soup word for a lot of different concepts and understandings and um, some see it as a blueprint like literally the astral body blueprint of ourselves in the astral realms some see it as our um our emotional selves right so our feeling selves and and the way i see it though is it's literally the connection to the divine okay so if you want to see it and what i want to um i'll try to use examples that that you know <laughs> so if you want to see it as as a, a tube right or a um a channel or a a a pipe a pipe okay and this pipe when when we are radiated right because we are emanating from the divine and um, by the way there are uh, four or five ways of creation right so there's to make something there's to create something there's to manifest something and there's to emanate something and that's what the divine is said to do is to emanate right and um, so we emanate from the divine these these spirit monads they emanate from the divine and as they um, go through their different experiences they they're they're cloaked and surrounded with varying layers of so-called understanding or meaning or what have you whatever and the soul is that constant connection that pipe to the divine in my eyes and the spirit of God or the spirit of source or origin or whatever doesn't trigger you um, <laughs> and it's so annoying because you can't even say a sentence anymore like it's like just please try to understand make the effort you know so um, the spirit of God travels along this pipe, travels along this tube, and illuminates life on this side of things, right? Brings the love of God into this side of things. So that spirit, right, is indestructible, indivisible. Um, it is it is who we are, right? And it is always connected to that divine. So the spirit can retreat. The spirit can retreat out of this, this experience, right? The soul can collapse. The soul can be disconnected. The soul can be cut off. But the spirit of God cannot be um, cut off from God. It cannot be, um, you know, uh, it, it's turn on a light bulb, right? And you see the light emanates all around. And um, let's say you, you put a balloon or something, right? And you can see the light shining through that balloon. But once you twist off the balloon, right, and um, that portion that is twisted off, if you separate it off and you're separating it from the light, it doesn't carry that light in it anymore. And similar 
to the soul. The soul would be that connection, that that um, the connection itself, right? So if somebody's cooking with soul, if somebody's making music with soul, if somebody's like all these uh, sayings that we have, there's a connection to something deeper, higher, more. There's, there's a je ne sais quoi, this, this of life that they're bringing through into their creativity, into their art that they're doing here. So people use that word interchangeably, but it's not for me a blueprint. It's not for me who you are at all. And um, it's not for me that that core essence of yourself that you are um, thinking is describing your soul. To me, the soul is literally the connection to the divine. And like I said, yes, it can be cut off. It can also be diverted, in which case you wouldn't call it a soul anymore but it can be made to gain energy from various sources and this is what um black magicians wizards all this kind of like this perversion comes in right and uh so that can be absolutely done now you can absolutely there are soulless beings on this this planet and i feel like um a lot of people want to say you know there's only good there's only love there's only light no there's not you know, and that's part of spiritual maturity to, to recognize that. It's part of becoming a mature human being to recognize that there are certain forces or things in this planet, some of which are good, some of which are not good for us, and to have discernment and um, to be able to gracefully but openly move through life and, and partake in what is good for you, right? And leave the rest to find itself. <laughs> so... Um, there's there's not only positives in this life but the problem is again our conceptualization and our um judgment and our ascribing meaning to something that only has the meaning that we put on it because that example i find is so precious because it really explains things what is evil the spider or the fly you know the spider is weaving its web the fly gets caught in it the spider eats it was the spider now an evil being really no and um it's the same thing with with everything right so for lack of better wording i will use that terminology also for speed of communication right i'm not going to be like going out and explaining the whole enchilada every single time so we're going to be using words that are just easy to to use and um so yes there are there are things out there or are energies out there that are um not what we would call soulful beings or um beings that have a soul or have a connection to the divine and um or have chosen to divert that connection to connect to something else which they would want to see as divine and um the only one and we keep forgetting that it's not by our ego choice it's not by our head choice that we create anything that we're here or that we connect to the divine right it's it's the by divine grace and this is what kabbalah teaches as well where when you dive into things it's 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 um the only one that is doing anything is god right and we we all we need to do is surrender to that flow right surrender to that flow of love to that flow of um we ask god to connect to us we do not ask to connect to god right and um and so if you have lost your soul or broken your soul right you go through what some shamans right for lack of better terminology it's also cliche nowadays and overused right because it's become um a product it, it, it's uh we we don't really live in a society that um respects honors understands spiritual concepts as a general thing it's just not the way it is and um so it's become cliched and through that cliched a little bit of the understanding has gone lost or the depth the profound the profoundness has gone lost but that's what old ancient shamans used to do they talked about that losing this connection to life because that connection to life is what gives you gives you your mojo gives you your drive gives you your creativity gives you your impulse gives you your inspiration right and um this this life then flows through you and you you use everything in front of you to express something that you can't suppress right 
And so shamans would do a soul retrieval, right? And a soul retrieval involved going to the other side and finding that point where the soul had been given up, lost, connected, and um, healing that spot in the consciousness of people. Now, since people have such a physical, literal understanding of things and are very dense in their... Um, ability to grasp concepts, it's very difficult to describe or, or bring into this realm what exactly happens in consciousness, but it's it's in your consciousness. It's 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 and that affects your body, right? So the changes are happening in how you think, how you perceive, what you align to, right? And um so there's there's all that <laughs> and a soul retrieval is basically like reconnecting your soul to divine source and that's asking divine source for help and healing and that goes through basically all cultures and societies in some way shape or form that there is a big part of healing is um, asking the divine for help right and this is why there's so many sayings around which prayers are heard and prayers are heard from those of the righteous and on and on and on and on but um it's it's uh, or true shamans are not shamans that are deciding to be shamans true shamans are the people that call spirit and spirit answers right um and so on and so forth so but a big part of that healing has to do with asking the divine for healing asking the divine to um, assist in the healing to facilitate healing because only the divine can can stretch out that connection right can can and um only someone who is still connected can connect with the divine and ask the divine to um radiate out i hope that makes sense so just close your eyes and repeat that right so someone who's connected to the light can get that light to shine to someone else and reconnect to that person right so um the the healing though and the connection comes from the divine so yes there are a lot of soulless people and i'm pretty sure if you're honest with yourself you'll you'll find them everywhere you know like um just look around you look at who's running our our countries and um okay so people talk about lizards let's get into that just a teeny tiny bit i'm not gonna you know expand too much into that but yes there have been reptilian entities there are reptilian entities some are what we would describe as absolutely evil um, they are our spiders and we are the fly in that case and there are others that are absolutely not just like humans that are very um, <clears throat> full of wisdom full of teachings and these reptilians tend to focus on helping humanity heal and helping um, helping humanity work within the earth and so there is a certain um, distraction that comes through them as well but we'll discuss that sometime else but yes I do work with reptilian energies as well and um, I do have a, a um, they have helped me with understanding healing processes as well and um, these energies are there. I mean, it's it's like you can't turn over a rock without fi finding crawling life. If you look through a microscope, everything is crawling with the life. So yeah, there are various forms of life that are intelligent, that move through our dimension as well, that are not what we would call human, right? So um, what else? Um, the soul stealing okay uh that would be the soul diversion or what people call soul stealing yeah right because there are people that have no souls <laughs> that have no connection to the divine that have no interest in connecting to the divine that are working off of purely um dark energy that hasn't been illuminated by divine forces right so yeah that's a kind of common in our world today and anybody that says otherwise is living in voluntary denial in my eyes that really don't want to um see what's going on or wake up right so um yes there are entities that uh will uh divert after passing um especially for people that are in a lot of fear that are looking for some kind of absolution that comes from outside of themselves some kind of release that comes from outside of themselves but we also have to understand that the death process and how people die and go through it changes with time 
<laughs> to make everything complicated. Um, it changes with our cultural understandings as well, right? So if people were, let's say, 100, 200 years ago, they were absolutely t petrified of death, right? The whole Christian cult is actually a death cult, right? So in its essence, and um, they were petrified of dying. They were petrified of being judged, of getting to hell, of what came after. And... Um, uh, absolutely in fear so when they landed on the other side they're in a vibratory energy of fear right so that's not somewhere where light can easily penetrate so they're going to have different experiences that you're talking about and people coming out of that mindset or out of that paradigm still today are going to be talking about those kinds of experiences and that's just the way it is right so people that are in a lot of you know um invested in in displacing power right displacing power just dis, uh placing power into the hands of some divine being or some other entity right they're going to be susceptible to that after passing if that shows up in their sphere and some entities do take advantage of that and show up in their sphere and divert and that is just what it is and um, at the same time, we, we can't be afraid, right? We can't be afraid of that because this is why we're talking about this right here, right now. This is why we're bringing it up into awareness and conversation because um, it, it's one of my examples is you can't go out on the ocean, right? Every time, if you go out in the ocean, you go fishing, you go scuba diving, you go whatever, you're gonna get a security briefing. You're gonna get told these and these are the dangers, right? So please don't do this and um, it's standard and it has nothing to do with fear-mongering it has to do with making aware bringing awareness to right and um, it has to do everything with also taking self-responsibility and willing be willing to take res self responsibility of course that's a given if we're going on a boat and we're going out to the deep sea but for some reason people think that oh I just need to throw myself into death and everything's going to be okay. Well, you know, life goes on. That's the whole point. <laughs> and so everything about life goes on, which means that there will continue to be situations where we need to take self-responsibility and look out for ourselves, right? So um, it is what it is, right? Consciousness feeds consciousness, right? So everything is conscious, right? Everything. And... Um, the fruits, animals, plants, trees, everything is consciousness. So if you want to eat or ingest information, you're not going to get around ingesting and eating consciousness, right? So just what form of consciousness, what form of information are you taking in? And the entire universe is that, right? So it's this whole yin yang, ingesting, creating, recycling, this whole thing continuing over and over and over again. And we need to stop putting ourselves into this position of seeing ourselves as extra to that as outside of this process as disconnected from this entire process because we're not right so yes on one hand we're special like snowflakes okay but on the other hand we're a part of this whole thing where we're just not that important right on the other hand yes um, we are eternal beings right so we're true core self is absolutely eternal it's not going anywhere it's part of the whole um hum of this universe this whole uh symphony of the um of the universe each one of us carries a, a, a specific tone right on the other hand our personalities or that which we generate as a personality to deal with everything that's going on in our lives these are transient right we're not even the same persons that we were 10 years ago okay so this is not something that stays but our true core self which shines out through that personality right our personality is like the stained glass window our core self is the light behind it right so it shines through that personality that always remains and so we need to get in touch with that we need to get in touch with that and not fear it and not be afraid of it because many people don't because they know 
They know, they intuitively and instinctively know that that true core personality is going to tell them to do things in life that they don't want to do, right? Their ego is not about to let them do, such as get that divorce, quit that job, you know? Stop treating your children like that. Stop um, beating yourself up like that. Stop um, going looking for validation like that. Stop um, cut your addictions to various foods or, or things like that. We don't want to do that. Right? And that's just the state of consciousness that the world is in currently. But we're shifting out of that. We're becoming more and more aware. Right? But part of the reason people are not connecting to their true core selves is they're afraid. Plain and simple. Right? And um, once we do, though, it, it, it changes everything. And you realize there's nothing to be afraid of. There is absolutely nothing to be afraid of and that you will brought through. And yes, some situations turn into an inconvenience, but um, it's only for a short while, right? Chaos cannot last. And that's another secret to dealing with evil and secret to dealing with negativity is that a lot of us fear it because yes, it's a constant force in this universe, right? But the forms it takes and the works it does, the damage that it does, it's always transient. It cannot last because that is its nature is to um, divide. So something is stable because it's balanced, right? And it's, it's working together, especially when it's um, like let's say a bridge right so we've got the pillars of a bridge that are working together to carry the weight of the bridge and um it's it's stable and it's lasting and it's balanced and it's it doesn't really move or change right it allows for certain you know um it's a little bit flexible to allow for certain expansion contraction but in essence it's it's stable chaotic forces are not stable right they are all over the place right they are um, breaking down they are divisive so by their own nature they cannot stick together to create something that um, stays together as a constant negative force right because this constant negative force is what we would call um, or this this um, sticking together is 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 what we would call uh, love right so love permeates everything and um, eventually right this path the negative path uh, those of you that have studied I'm really careful I'm stuttering because I'm getting really careful because I have to be mindful um, of the information right because some people take stuff and just run with it into corners you would never even think of <laughs> but um, Alistair Crowley did mention and others that the negative path can lead to enlightenment just as well as the positive path and yes it does right so we call that nowadays right a lot of people have switched to the terminology instead of positive and negative we call it service to self or service to other and service to other um continues on into infinity right service to self only goes so far and then it flips into service to other or this concept this idea that is being represented is deemed to be unusable and is demolished and that is um, something that a lot of people have have issue with right but I mean we are reflections of the universe so a lot of things you can see just by looking around nature will teach you you know and what is of no use to the extension of love and to life is eventually phased out I mean in your own life too right either by your own workings or by natural causes so it's no different there right and um and so evil doesn't last forever it doesn't bond to to roving bands that stick together forever um, it just doesn't work because by its nature evil is chaotic and divisive and meant to break things up it's meant to it has its uses right and it's very necessary just like you need to be 
um, evil in a sense if you're moving houses, right? You need to break things down, you need to take things apart, you need to um, divide things, right? You need to throw some things out, keep some things that are evil tests, right? So what survives that test of moving you take with you, right? So it's, it's pretty similar in that case, but it's not an energy that you're not constantly always every minute of your life you're moving, right? It, it, it doesn't work like that. So another thing about evil is that it, it's trying to change your polarity, right? And it's trying to, um, I mentioned in the previous video, in video number one, that we are here to shift our vibration, to shift our vibrational frequency. And so evil is a very important part of that. Nobody that has encountered evil goes out of that unchanged, right? Nobody that has encountered negativity goes out of that unchanged. It, it just doesn't happen, right? So there's a very uh, serious reason to it. And, um, and this is another part of the Bible and people will criticize the Bible up and down and yes, you know, it was it was so called written by men but weren't all the holy writings, right? And it was the divine working through man because these teachings have stood the test of time and I've really at first I didn't understand the Bible, right? And at first I went in with a lot of um judgment and a lot of preconceived notions and all of that. But once I really started reading it and I mean reading it, like really feeling as I was reading what was being said, it's like the feelings would unlock layers of information. And I found so much corroborating what, especially people that are developing spiritually, went through and experienced the thoughts, the feelings, the things that they faced. And so I wouldn't dismiss the Bible. I think it's one of the most, um, it's, it's right up there with all the other holy writings, a very important book. So take your time and just um, throw everything out that you think you know. And just like the, the Course in Miracles says, don't go in with the past, right? Everything you look at, you don't know what the meaning of it is. You don't know what it means. You have no conceptions around it. And, and go in with that. So even in the Bible, there's this book of Job where Job is tested and the devil is roaming and he goes to God and he's talking to God. Now, this is really important because it looks, you know, the devil is, is subservient to God in that book. And um, they're actually in good cohorts, right? So the devil is doing his thing out there and God's like, okay, you know. So there is that, which, which also gives you the reassurance that whatever evil you're facing or going through, it's not going to last. It can't because chaotic forces are by their nature divisive. So sooner or later, they're going to divide themselves. They're going to break themselves up and they're not going to be able to build any long lasting coalition it just doesn't work they are self-destructive and um, that's just you know how it is <laughs> so yes they want to to switch your polarity and um, in the past video I was talking about that how we're here to change our polarity we're here to um, shift our certain vibration to expand more right to expand our ability to love our capability of loving expand the limitations of love that's why each and every one of us in our lifetimes rich poor sick healthy whatever we're tested with limitations on love right so we're tested with what we're able to love every single one of us and um, be it parents be it partners be it um, ourselves our situations all of them combined in various shapes or forms we're tested with the limits of love and we're meant to expand those limits we're meant to expand that into this realm we're able to we're supposed to bring that vibration of love into this realm and in order to do that we're going to have to shift our vibration we're going to have to level up in order to carry a more pure vibration and a mere higher vibration of love through our own vibration into this and that's what part of what we're doing here so evil steps in and kind of tests us right and kind of throws it up in our face because the only way to heal something or to change something is to be conscious of it you can't change something that you're not aware or conscious of so seeing that and understanding that understanding the death process and understanding that there are creatures that that um you know uh hijack us it's it's not you 
you can try to see it differently and not see it as oh my god evil creatures and evil beings are coming and they're they're taking all their power away no they're coming because you're giving the power away right because life continues life goes on and everything that has to do with the life goes on after dying right um death is is an illusion in that sense and so just like we're tested here in life right through the experiences that we have after passing it just continues it just it doesn't stop it just goes on and that's what the tests over there look like right over here we're talking about a different you know this is what it looks like here but over there that's what it looks like over there so if you're the type of person or your type of consciousness to displace power to place power into the hands of others right which the vast a lot of people are then um you have the uh, you're probably going to run into that you know that uh something is going to show itself as as what you the concept that you believe in most and um bring you back to a place where you again have the chance to change that energy right so it's you can see it like that it doesn't need to be this this absolute fearful way of seeing things you know but at the same time like i don't want to take responsibility for your consciousness just like i have responsibility over my consciousness you have responsibility over yours it's your dominion right so you can't be triggered by everything anybody says um and and think that the best way to deal with darkness is to keep it dark and put it back under the uh, the carpet and so many people are making videos on this and it's really interesting because the darkness seems to be rising on social media platforms right it, it's there's this definite counter stream and um where uh people are really bringing a lot of um this kind of energy to comments or showing but maybe it's they're showing their ideas and maybe they're opening themselves up to to ask for help in a way right so maybe we should see this as an asking for help and asking for clarification and asking for um assistance in shifting their their vibe and so if it's that then that's what i'm definitely here for i'd like to thank you guys for the amazing response on the last video and um yeah again if you have any questions comments or experiences you'd like to share the comment section is there and i love interacting with you guys so um i'm here <laughs> and i'm wishing you a wonderful time and i hope that explains or clarifies some of the questions that were open on the last video on um, what happens after death take care bye